Thank you all for coming. Uh, happy Republic Day. Thanks for spending it with us. Uh, this event is really special to us because Ajit and I have been planning it for a year. Uh, for very <coughs> when when uh, Lakshman passed away, uh, I think millions of people were really sad in India. Uh, and we had a, we had a conversation, and Ajit said, "Let's do a tribute to Lakshman." I said, "You know, great, let's do it." And some one thing or the other came up, and we we couldn't do it. A few weeks ago, Ajit sends me an email. Can we do the talk uh, on his on his anniversary, on his first death anniversary, which is today? And I said, I didn't know it was 26 June, Jan. I just said, yes, let's do it. And it turned out that it's on Republic Day, and it's today, and uh, and so uh, this was. It's really. It's, and I, I know that Ajit has been planning this for a very long time. He's, he went to the Asiatic Society in Bombay, uh, looked up old uh, uh, illustrated weeklies, tried to photograph them, and, he, and they said that you know it's going to be 500 rupees for a picture. Thousand rupees. Thousand rupees for a picture. <laughs> And, and I think he just <coughs> spent a, I don't know No, what, no, no, I didn't, I didn't take any. <laughs> but, but I know he's taken a lot of effort for this <coughs> talk, and, and, and uh, he's been here before, and we know what a, what a, what, it was just fantastic the last time he was here. So, uh, everybody's been really patient. I'm not going to say anything more. Ajit, thanks so much for coming. Uh, we are recording this, so it's going to be on YouTube at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what I say now. <laughs> so good evening and uh, huh? <laughs> actually, actually sometimes when you have too much time to prepare, it's a disadvantage also. In the last minute, you end up being unprepared. You know? So today, even I have not seen the presentation complete. Just finished it and came here. So let's take a look. So happy Republic Day, everybody. I put those colors here. So we are celebrating two things. We are celebrating his work and uh, yeah. So this light will be on. That's uh, it's interesting. His name is there. The common man, L-A-X-M-A-N. <laughs> this was a wordplay I had done long back for a newspaper. So when actually Kushru asked me, I didn't uh, mention to him, he had said, uh, so that time I was wondering whether I am really qualified to speak. Then I removed all my scrapbooks that I had and it's like tons and tons of scrapbook. I've been a fan of his from childhood, I've been drawing his uh, thing, uh, meaning that time the advantage was there was no Google, there no the media the way it is there now. There were just few things, Illustrated Weekly was there, two or three newspapers and uh, Doordarshan, just one TV channel. So whatever you saw, it was treasured. Not like the way now ev everything is. Uh, so all these were for me very special. And uh, they're all uh, stuck on some computer paper, I think. So whatever. So um, I was excited about that. But then when I started reading, I realized there's too much of material to read. And one more thing, I, I've had many opportunities to actually meet Lakshman and chat with him. So then I tried to put all that together. So today, let's see what goes on. From So yeah, so we are going to talk today about the work of Ake Lakshman. So what is his full name? Yeah. That's him, born in Mysore, and he passed away in Pune. And he's a Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and a Miksa Se Award winner. So how does one reach that level of accomplishment? Initially, what I was planning to do was have a sketching session with all of you. Then we realized the lo logistics don't work out well. So I would like you to use your imagination. I'll be just showing lines. So imagine you're drawing those lines as uh,
So it's very important to understand what this man was really doing. It's just uh, paper and pencil and uh, brush. That's all were his tools. And with that, most of the time he was sitting in one room in the Times of India building and doing all the work that he produced. So how does somebody like that pick up the kind of skills that is required for you know, reaching that level of accomplishment? So I've, I've tried to put together, there may be a lot of written stuff. Uh, Kushru, any of your story guys are here? Story sessions you have, no? Any, anyway, so we'll find out somebody from you who can read that because there'll be a lot of reading stuff. <coughs> so who would like to read this? One person. Read it loud so that we all, yeah. Mercifully, I had no formal training from, my, from any master. So my drawing technique is pretty unconventional. Yeah. You saw the film before this, huh? like I, I have not seen that. Does that the, did that cover his life the, from the? So. Somebody read this. When it was my turn, he stared at the drawing. He was talking about his uh, drawing teacher in school when he was. Uh, when it was my turn, he stared at the drawing for an alarmingly long time and asked me, Did you draw it yourself, Lakshman? I was frightened and stepped back, expecting a shower of blows. I replied, You asked us to draw, sir. I sat there and drew, fumbling for a safe excuse. But to my great surprise and joy, he held my slate up before the class and announced, Attention! Look how nicely Lakshman has drawn the leaves. He turned to me and said, you will be an artist one day. Keep it up. I was inspired by this unexpected encouragement. I began to think of myself as an artist in the making, never doubting that this was my destiny. So what I've done is I've kept all his quotations to get the feel as if he's giving this talk for us. <laughs> I'm not going to be passing any comments on uh, let it be like he, he's speaking. And I mean, this is a, such an important part in the encouragement of a teacher at a young age. And this he has repeated in most of his interviews, this one particular incident. And um, yeah. Started going to the marketplace on Sayaji Road, Sayaji Rao Road. I'd sketch anything that passed my vision. The brinjal seller, a man, a man who came on a cycle and bought a couple of bananas without getting down from the cycle, balancing himself, a cow chewing, a policeman on his beat, a postman on his rounds. From the very beginning, I have been fascinated by human figures. The way they stand, the way they sit, the way they lift somebody else's hand to look at the time and drop it. <laughs> See the detail of observation. It's so well put, meaning that uh, other one also came on the cycle and bought a couple of bananas without getting down from the cycle, balancing himself. And these are drawings from the Malgudi days, uh, the title sequence. Here, here you can understand all this investment that he put into, how it reflects in e each of his drawings are natural, absolutely. And it applies to his brother also. He would have had the same kind of observation from another. So how this leads up, these are some sketches I had collected long back. Because he continued to have his sketchbook throughout. You know, so these are the kind of sketches he used to. <laughs> Dut Pani Wala, Sardarji, Four Wheels, No Bricks, Dabba Wala, Vigilant Chaprasi, <laughs> Mia Bai in Chor Bazar. Gonsalves and Rosie. This is very typical, the Aya <laughs> Bhavaji Bambotwala. Kolaba Yankees. These are the days of the hippies. <coughs> Constable Sakaram. Oh, yeah, remember the half pants. <laughs> Yeah. 
see the easiness with which everything is drawn, the gestures and all, because of the kind of uh, what the observation skills that he developed at that time. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> the typical scene. <laughs> And this is a much later, it's a calendar, I just found it on the net some four days back and I thought this is, meaning all that he has put in, see the, the detailing of the table, the charts on the wall, the safe and each one's face. They are actually people you can recognize, you know, there's hardly any illustrator you find with this kind of understanding of the Indian psyche. That calendar is full of all these, each one is well thought out and planned and absolutely effortless. You would like to continue reading? You read quite well actually. Mm -hmm. I used to draw myself from the mirror, sketch my portrait and study the fall of the tree. How the trousers fell. If the fold goes wrong, your drawing is ruined. I would study in the mirror my fingers, fingers holding, holding a pen, the foreshortening of the arm as it is pointed towards you. This uh, will apply to any field. Any, when you're, this is all self-learning. He wasn't in any art school. And uh, picking these things up on his own. And uh, it's a lovely autobiography he has written, Tunnel of Time. Is really, this I think is from that. But even these things he's repeated in his uh, other, because it's here, here you can see all, when he, means, when he talks about the folds, because eventually you're just using a pencil and paper. So you're, you're, sub, you're capturing everything within that. So it has to have a feeling of weight, a feeling of flow, feeling of what, uh, like even this, turns. These don't come easily unless you really observe them. So I applied to the JJ School of Art with a suitable <coughs> specimen of my drawing. They promptly wrote saying that I didn't have much talent. I was rejected. If JJ School had taken me, I would have been some ad agency fellow. Luckily, I had to continue with my studies and I graduated in economics, philosophy and politics. Later when I had made a name, the JJ School of Arts called me for some prize distribution. <laughs> now they are planning to have his memorial there, that's what I read this summer. And, uh, but it's interesting how destiny works, because what he was studying is what uh, was helpful to him in his... I mean, these subjects are absolutely r making him ready for what he eventually got into. I, I don't have his whole story here because then we'll have we'll go on. So, but just I've just picked up few things which I feel was important in leading him where he reached. On influences, now this one. Just observe this cartoon. See the way the caricatures are done. See the brush strokes. See the shading. I'll show another one. Same thing, the caricature element in the face, the way the shading is done, the way the brush, strong. Oh, sorry, I'm not talking about the ideas. I was just looking totally at the form. This also the same style, sorry. Okay, now are these the same person? The first one we saw, what's the signature? It's Balta Kres drawing. The next one we saw, this is Lakshman's drawing. So they are following a particular style. At that time, the, the one who was reigning in the cartoon world was this Brit British cartoonist. This is his work. So it's a style they are following, which is a classical form. And uh, Lakshman was very influenced 
Yeah, I have that also. I'll, I'll show that. Now see his signature here. Yeah, now you can read this. Anybody else wants to read? You're welcome to. Oh, I will continue. Ah, yeah. One day by accident, I saw a cartoon opposite the editorial page of the Hindu. I studied it. It made no sense to me. But the brilliance of its draftsmanship was stunning and held my attention for a long time. The cartoon showed three fingers in a boat in a stormy sea, waves rising like mountains. The giant waves, the boat, the people were all labeled. I looked at the name of this marvelous artist at the bottom of the cartoon. It was brief and bold and I read it as cow. From the day on, I looked for the cow. Cartoon, I looked for the cow cartoon which appeared now and then in the Hindu. Again, as a kid, he is looking at that, where he does not understand any of the political ideas that are discussed there. And the signature we saw in the previous one, that is what he is referring to. I managed to locate the cartoon, the one he is referring to, and this is the one he is talking about. See the power of this as a drawing. It is obvious that it must have really influenced him at that age to see something like that. He is talking about waves like mountains the three figures with these letters written around it. And this was a, this is a style of cartooning where you put a situation and then you write the equivalent with the news uh, relevance of it. This is Lowe's, uh, sorry, <laughs> I am not supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah. I spent hours gazing at the drawing and observing its finer points, the gentle caricature of faces, the effortless flow of line, the perspective, the drapery, all done in controlled distortion, a masterpiece of visual satire. But of course I understood nothing of the cartoon's political content. With great effort, I tried to grasp that too. I became an avid follower of this illustrator's work. Only much later, I learned his name was not Gao but Lowe. <laughs> and this was said by the world-renowned Sir David Lowe. No, no. It is, uh, by Lakshman. <laughs> By Lowe, the world-renowned Sir David Lowe. That is uh, Lowe's caricature. No. So, uh, see the influences. One is that teacher encouraging him and then himself studying and all that. We are not talking about his influences from R.K. Narayan and all that. There is a whole lot of uh, things he is being surrounded with. And then he suddenly comes across with this cartoonist and then makes him his model. And he is the same uh, model for Baltakre also. That is why the style is similar. In Baltakre's interviews, if you read, he, he to, uh, credits it to David Lowe. As I grew up, I gathered scraps of information about him. The strangest moment of my life occurred one morning in 1952. But then I had already worked five years with the Times of India as its political cartoonist. I always went to the office at 8.30 in the morning before everyone had arrived. That day, as I entered my room, I was astonished to see a couple <coughs> sitting in the chairs opposite my desk. It was Mr. and Mrs. David Lowe. This was the man I had dreamt of seeing somewhere, sometime one day, without much hope since childhood. Certainly not so casually right in my own room that morning. How we reached there is another story. But uh, the kind of uh, coincidences or situation that happen when you follow your calling, you see him is constantly following his calling. The, all the if you read his book, it's absolutely fantastic how he's taking, and he keeps saying it is uh, it just came his way, but he's actually taking decisions and that's uh, Lakshman's drawing of David Lowe. <coughs> the level of exaggeration and all it's uh, it's not easy to achieve this kind of fluidity and capturing the personality and the spirit of the person. On the strength of, sorry, on the strength of, it, of his having come, come here, the company sent me to England for nearly eight months. This is when I met Bert, Bertrand Russell and T.S. Eliot and Graham Greene and Churchill at Lee. I even attended a Labour Party conference in Blackpool. So how one thing leads to another and these are done by them sitting in front of him. This is uh, Burton Russell, this is T.S. Eliot and this is Attlee. 
So I just uh, blew this one up to see the level of detailing that goes into this. He has obviously autographed it for him. And meaning to get the personality, this kind of eyes and all, this is a high level of observation. Because I have tried drawing him and I know how difficult it is to get this. <laughs> then we come to his famous, the common man. Again here there will be a lot of reading. <laughs> And uh, it's okay, the leading, reading sounds uh, yeah. fun. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's not reading, it's Lakshman talking to us. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at it that way. It was difficult for me in the early days to symbolize him, to reflect public opinion. I had to draw the Maharashtrian, the Mysorean, the Rajasthani, the Madrasi, the Punjabi. The deadline factor forced me to cut down on the figure. Four people became three, which became two. One day I found one man standing there. <laughs> <laughs> he found me, I didn't find him. This is such a fantastic statement. And he says this again and again, you know, that... Uh, and this you'll find in most creative people's work, they say things like this. Like um, Chuck Jones, who used to do the Bugs Bunny stories, he used to say that Bugs Bunny tells him what he wants to do. And even when you read Salim Javed on when they were writing Shole, they say after a while, Gabbar was dictating the dialogues to them. You know, so when they invest, uh, when they put in that kind of uh, input into the characters, the character actually comes alive. This is the development, whatever drawings I managed to get earlier how he was. For a long time as relief, I was providing the readers with some comic relief in their dreary humdum existence. The bespectacled common man in his checked coat had walked into my cartoon spontaneously, as if I had no hand in his creation. In the course of time, I was surprised to discover that my readers looked upon me not merely as a cartoonist who tickled their sense of humor, but as a profound thinker, a social reformer, a political scientist, a critic of errant politicians, and so on. Now see how the responsibility doubles, meaning how increases, <laughs> because you have created a character, now you are responsible for that, and that character now decides what, what you are going to be. It's, it's really interesting to study his, because consistently he's done this for over 50 years, the, the common man. Uh, and I have cut down a lot of things. This one? You can see all the, the bulbous nose is there, the moustache is there. And the check came at some time, then it disappeared again. So then... the Tata Nano in the corner. Where? <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would have loved to show these cartoons also, but then uh, it would be... We can have a next, se next session only on the cartoons. This would be... Because here I have uh, even skipped. You said it. <laughs> because there are a lot of other things to cover. It's a lovely drawing. Mm -hmm. oh. He evolved just as I evolved as a cartoonist. Names make him These all we'll read separately. So he evolved just as I evolved as a cartoonist. Somebody else read this. <coughs> Names make him permanent while he's impermanent. Everywhere. In the Prime Minister's office today, in a drought stricken village tomorrow. The common man is a spectator, not a player. <laughs> These are from different interviews I just picked up to get an overall picture of what the common man depicts. The common man does not speak. Silence is his greatest eloquence. The common man is never the victim. He is only amused, vastly amused. A sense of humor is so essential for human survival. But the common man is a child of the moment and humor doesn't always stick with him. The emergency provoked him to unprecedented anger. There's a lovely cartoon of this also. I will not put that here. But each of these, most of you have read the, read the you said it once. Huh? So you'll find all these qualities coming again and again. The common man has no past, no future. His philosophy is to live. Nothing matters but the present. He is indestructible. 
he will still be there long after these politicians have all turned into statues. <laughs> he is like Brahma, omnipotent. It's a very Indian concept. <laughs> I realized that this fellow had taken over my job. <laughs> because it seems uh, people used to call him, sometimes he would uh, deliberately not use the common man in his cartoon and he would get these calls from people, you know, like asking about that. And um, almost as if he belongs to them and not to him. You know? The common man's popularity is something that Lakshman has washed his hands off. Whatever I am doing is done through some external force, Lakshman says quietly. And this is again a thing he talks about off and on. I just put in this one cartoon, where when he doesn't talk, who does the talking? The boss. The boss, <laughs> yeah. So there is, next time whenever we have a talk, we'll have all these, like just the wife cartoons. I mean, over the years, <laughs> she has uh, strong opinions of her own, and uh, she always also gives advice to Indira Gandhi and all of them in some of the... So this I've just put in as I, I'm not using any of the you said it cartoons here. So now to talk about his political cartoons, I just selected this as an example. Otherwise, uh, it's very difficult what to select, what not to select. Till the time I was leaving here, I didn't know how much to squeeze in, how much not to. So I've tried to hope this... Uh, now what do you do when you get a politician like this? who's so good looking and uh, yeah so uh, let's see how he deals with him yeah now somebody can read the arrival of mr rajiv gandhi on the scene as prime minister caused me some worry from the professional point of view a good looking leader with unrivaled potentialities yet reputed to be daring dynamic forward looking and with a scientific bent of mind might very well prove a satirical cartoonist undoing for sheer, for sheer want of a theme in a utopia, which the youngest, younger reader might succeed in ushering to. A cartoonist prefers someone. Like more Or Charan Singh. Or Raj Narayan. As the center of focus, they are easy to caricature and capable of keeping a cartoonist profession flourishing. <laughs> now he is, uh, we'll see in the next one what he does to <laughs> Rajiv Gandhi. Oh, there's more. Yeah, somebody read this. Mr. Rajiv Gandhi was an awesome unknown factor. I watched him nervously as he took over the office and began to rule. But soon my hopes revived. I was able to gather plenty of ideas from Rajiv Gandhi's style of functioning. I even managed to find points in his features for distortion. Made him look a little more rotund than, than he really was. I shortened his no nose and tilted it slightly upward. I thickened his eyebrows and reduced the hair on his pate, making him nearly bald. Thus having remodeled him to suit my purpose, I began to produce this image day after day for the times. Shortly, people started to remark that Rajiv had begun to resemble my car. <laughs> And uh, this is the same thing he did to Jawaharlal Nehru, this is the same thing he did to Indira Gandhi. If we go on seeing those, they are different, like he never showed uh, Jawaharlal Nehru with his cap. And uh, to the point that Jawaharlal Nehru asked him, why don't you show the cap? <laughs> now you want to see what happens to... <laughs> so, I selected this because you can draw parallels with the current situation. It's very similar. The <laughs> create a personality. He takes somebody like that and then creates his own and uh, the person ends up looking like this. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You can uh, chain these guys to the present situation. Yeah. 
I selected these specifically because of the contemporariness of it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. many of the political ideas are difficult to grasp because they are outdated. This applies now also. <laughs> I love the way he used to draw Indira Gandhi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, somebody is here, I think. <laughs> so, this is that time, <laughs> those days when we had only one channel. In Delhi, they had started a second channel, and so <laughs> when you watch. <laughs> he's perfected this. Actually, I did find a photograph, I have not put in it, which uh, he actually looks like this, Rajiv Gandhi. This also is so <laughs> contemporary. <laughs> This also fits perfectly now. Already wearing which, <laughs> which place to go to next. Now the famous crows. Most of you are aware of this, his obsession with uh, drawing crows. I used to meet him in his Times of India office and uh, outside the window there would always be crows. So <laughs> it was such an amazing feeling sitting in that space where he actually did all his... Uh, we got along very well in the first meeting, so he said, I can come whenever... I, I used to stay in Ahmedabad that time, so whenever I come to Bombay, I can call him up and meet him. So it was a really wonderful meeting him there. So now the crows. Again, somebody will have to read. And this is... Uh, yeah, this I found on the net recently. It's beautifully done. His words on the crow. <clears throat> Somebody? Crows are interested in human activity. They are always <coughs> watching us. Which other bird is interested in us? <laughs> <laughs> when this infection was given at the Raj Bhavan for Prince Charles, there were a lot of, uh, there were a row of crows sitting on the roof and the PP and the love, watching what everybody was doing below. Imagine him sitting there and watching the crows. <laughs> sitting. It's not an obsession. I like this. I'm the only one I think who has liked the crow. It's a beautiful bird. So human. I enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry. And crows can count up to eight or ten, and they have a fiesta time between one to a ten. <laughs> We can see them under the eaves of roofs sleeping. And at 6.30 in the evening, all the crows in the locality gather and they talk to one another. I don't know what they discuss. <laughs> During my childhood, I tried to draw the <coughs> My mother saw this and encouraged me. She told me that Lord Shaniswara used the crow for his mom. If you draw his crow, she told me, surely he will send you good luck. <laughs> And this is one more. I managed to get this book on the roadside. I never knew we had done these. These are what I call flexing your creative muscles. Who oh, read? Yeah, once, uh, once talking to my doctor on the phone, I heard him mention the word vitamin B in passing. My hand had moved in at wood and and drawn an actual B. <laughs> Just having fun with this. <clears throat> Venus de Mello with restored arms. <laughs> with aluminum spikes to prevent slipping out of hand. 
easy to thread needle. <laughs> so, designed for pedestrian safety. <laughs> Fountain pen. <coughs> yeah, anybody? Uh, they are all inconsequentially admitted silly and infantile. Yes, I, yet, yet I think uh, they have a peculiar charm being sudden, unexpected, appalling, illogical all at once, like a child's observation. And that interested me, and therefore, this collection. There you go. I like that that is all. <laughs> no further, no profound things beyond. There's one more aspect of his work which very few people know about, the children's book illustrations. This also I found in the second-hand bookshops. In the That's his wife. She used to write these Tenali Raman stories and he used to illustrate it. And there's also Telma the Elephant, quite a few books they have done. I have most of them, uh, but I have just put one of them here. Yeah. Now this is Kamla Rachman talking. Who will read? Frankly, I think my books were a success because of Lakshmi's illustrations. He infused the characters with peculiar charm, which he could do because of his own uncluttered mind of a child. In spite of all his genius, he is a real child at heart. Simple things thrill him. This is a cover illustration. <laughs> it is such a okay. amazing uh, sketch. The whole feeling that is captured. And this uh, would be other than his other work that he was doing. He was doing a lot of work at Times of India. One was a pocket cartoon every day, then two big cartoons in the week, one bigger cartoon in the Sunday paper, plus he was writing his books, plus there were so many, he was des designing calendars, and in the middle of that he's doing this also, but done so beautifully. These are some <coughs> illustrations from, the book is also worth reading, she is a lovely writer. And this was what was made into the TV serial, because I met uh, the director and uh, he was telling me that they used to go to Lakshman's house with the script and he would act out what the characters do. He was supposed to be a fantastic actor and a mimic. So, and then he said one more thing, he said morning time that Kundan Shah, the, the one I am talking about is Nagabarna, he is a a director from Karnataka. He did Tenali Raman, the serial, and Kundan Shah did the Vagle Ki Dunya. No, sorry. Uh, was it Vagle? Yeah, Vagle Ki Dunya, right? Huh? Yeah. So he's saying morning, one team would be there taking instructions from him, and evening, he like uh, Lakshman would be giving instructions. To so he's also almost directing the serials, he's directing what the actors speak like. See the acting here, it's not only great drawing, great characterization, great body gesture, but it's also expressions. I wonder why they don't uh, reprint these. The colors also, this is very much like uh, Satyajit Ray's sketches also for <coughs> Gopi Gain Bhagavan. The, even there he has this kind of a feel to the... Yeah, and this is um, Stars I Never Met. These I picked up from the net because I had a set of old film fairs where there was Sunil Dutt and all that drawn by Lakshman. And I... For some reason, I just can't find it. Actually, those these uh, were looked forward to by the actors. I happened to meet Sunil Dutt once, and we were sitting on the same table and wondering what do I talk to him. And I just told him, I, I have a cartoon of a caricature of yours done by Lakshman. He got so excited. He said it came immediately after Mother India. 
and somebody told me that Lakshman has, I was so, like I was feeling honored that Lakshman decided to draw me. That's the way the Lakshman's work was looked at. Ashok Kumar. Who was that, Kushu? <laughs> you are a younger generation. <laughs> no, Kushu. <laughs> Gita Wali. It's quite beautifully done. Yeah? And, uh, this was a very small one. I want to, it seems this is from the Film Institute uh, archives. These are the ones which were there, the Asiatic Society, which they didn't allow me to photograph. And Times of India doesn't really allow you to access the archives. So it's very difficult to get access to the, you can see it, but you can't photograph it. And there's some amazing stuff he's done in the Illustrated Weekly of the Old, which nobody knows about. In the, in, Earlier they used to allow you to just take well, pictures. Are owned by the Times group. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think they are all Lakshmans because he always puts copyright Lakshman. So his son must be having the rights now. I don't know what the thing is with the, with the originals. Anybody can guess this of my generation or older than me? Motilal. Nirupa Roy. <laughs> Even when she was a heroine, she looked like old. <laughs> I suppose we were used to seeing her old, so when you see her old photographs, she looks old. And uh, yeah, who can read this? Some time ago, I was in Rome. There were three or four other people from the Vatican. One asked me, excuse me my friend, do you believe in God? Is that important? I asked. Is it not? He said, no. Whether God believes in you is more important. <laughs> Millions of people believe in God, but how do you know whether He believes in you? You see, our attitude should not be to take God for granted. I have a feeling that He believes in me. He has taken care of me and looked after me even though I have been slightly indifferent towards <laughs> yeah, it. There are lots of quotations on him, on destiny and all that. He talks about those things. Okay, I'm, uh, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was hoping to put a lot, but just deciding on what took me a lot of time and so we need to have a second uh, talk later where I'll put all the stuff that I wanted to put in but couldn't put in. When I was uh, seeing it, I realized it's really short. <laughs> it would have been good if it had gone on for some longer time. <laughs>